Hi, this is Phil Shapiro in Tacoma Park. I'm working on an iMac G4 that I'm ready to deliver. This is a donated computer. It's going to a fifth grader, a student from Ethiopia who came here a year or two ago. I wanted to make this video just to pass along some tips for other people who might be refurbishing computers for delivery in their own neighborhoods. So um, this is a pretty nice computer. It is, uh, uh, it's a Macintosh. I think it's got a 17 inch screen with 10.58 Leopard on here. One gigahertz PowerPC G4 processor and 1.25 gigabytes of memory. I have a very current web browser on here called 10.4fox and uh, I wrote a blog post about 10.4fox for opensource.com. You can go and look at that if you want to find out about 10.4fox. It's a like a version of Firefox but um, that is totally up to date with uh, that works on PowerPC computers but is a 2014 web browser and it's under continual development which means it's probably going to be a 2015 version maybe next year which is really nice. So what I've set up on this uh, computer, <clears throat> I downloaded a LibriVox audiobook, The Story of My Life by Helen Keller, and I, I put all the MP3 files here into iTunes. Here it is in iTunes. There's about 20 MP3 files. Uh, it's being read by somebody who's a volunteer but who did a fantastic job, this woman Maria Uther, I think it is, over in England, London, England. Then I have over here some open source software called Calibre, and I downloaded the ebook from Project Gutenberg, The Story of My Life by Helen Keller. And I'm using Calibre, the older version, not the current one, but the older version called 0.7.28, which works under PowerPC. So here I am, I'm going to open up this ebook by, uh, I drag the ebook from the desktop into here, into the library. So let me double click to open it up. And I'm going to show you the coaching that I'm going to give to the student so that over the summer he could go through this audio book. It's an interesting biography, autobiography, and um, learn some English and uh, uh, at the same time learn about a very remarkable person. So here's the story of my life by Helen Keller. And let me start the... Um, First of all, uh, I want to maximize that. So, oh, here it is, maximized. Okay, it's full screen here. That's nice. Story of my life. I want to come over here to chapter one. And I wonder if I can get a bigger font. Uh, they maybe give a preference for a bigger font or, uh, here it is, a larger font size. Um, there it is, there it is, there it is. Larger font, yeah, that's kind of nice. Larger font's kind of nice, even with this big monitor. So here's chapter one. And uh, you can move through this ebook. Over here, we have these purple arrows. There's a right arrow moves like a, a page forward, and the left arrow moves the page backwards. Now we have to start the audio part. And I have these really nice speakers. These are special Lucite kind of speakers that work just with this uh, iMac G4. You could use regular computer speakers that would plug into the back, but these happen to come with this free computer and they sound very nice. So I'm gonna start this audiobook, chapter one here, and the way that I brought the, uh, the MP3 files into iTunes, um, the files, the, it's not always in order, the numbering, but that's okay, you just look for chapter one. And you double click to start it. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please then visit LibriVox.org. I want to minimize org. this. Story of My Life by Helen Keller. Read by Maria Uther on June 6, 2006 in London, England. As you can hear, the audio is very Dedicated clear. Dedicated to Alexander Graham Bell. Very clear audio. the deaf to speak and enabled the listening ear to hear speech from the Atlantic to the Rockies. I dedicate this story of my life. Chapter 1 It is with a kind of fear that I begin to write the history of my life. I have, as it were, a superstitious hesitation in lifting the veil that clings about my childhood like a golden mist. The task of writing an autobiography is a difficult one. 
when I try to classify my earliest impression. You can pause at any time by bringing the iTunes back up and pressing the space bar so that as you're reading through the book, if you want to go to the bathroom or if you're a phone call or something like that, or if you're just taking a break, you can pause by bringing iTunes back up onto the screen and uh, pressing the space bar to stop it. And you could go back by scrolling, by clicking up here, uh, by scrubbing through at the very top. And you can minimize it after you start playing. And then uh, as you're listening, the student will have to move through the pages, which isn't that tough. Every, say, three minutes or so, the student will press this purple arrow and go on to the next screen, and then the next screen, and then the next screen, and the next screen, and then here's chapter two. So the, each chapter is maybe uh, 15 minutes worth of reading, maybe, uh, of reading aloud. And um, so this is neat. The student will learn spelling of words, the construction of sentences, um, and I think will benefit in their language development skills over the summer months uh, with a free computer. It's kind of neat. Uh, if the student comes back to me and say this was an interesting experience, then I will help them install other free books. For example, maybe Black Beauty, the story of this horse. Um, that's quite child friendly and child appropriate, student appropriate. And so I would put the audio files from LibriVox.org and then the ebook the EPUB file from Project Gutenberg. So other, other programs I have on this computer are LibreOffice. I have LibreOffice, an older version, and you can find it on the web by going older version LibreOffice PowerPC Mac. I think this is version 3.6. Yes, 3.612. And I've set it up so that whenever the student saves a file, it makes a Microsoft Word or an Excel file or a PowerPoint so that the student can easily exchange files with a classroom teacher or somebody else who's using Microsoft Office. Um, other programs I put on here, here's Inkscape, Vector Graphics Drawing Program. Uh, I put on SYA Sokoban, some very fun logic puzzles. I helped design some of these. And uh, there's a YouTube uh, screencast, SYA Sokoban, that you can look up that explains how to play these pretty fun puzzles, which you could spend hours on them because there's lots of different um, puzzle sets. The puzzle set I designed back in like 1992 was called Simple Sokoban, and that's included with this SYA Sokoban. Um, on the same computer, there is GarageBand for uh, music composing. Uh, so um, a couple of different things for the student just to explore. So for a free computer, it's kind of nice free computer and uh, it did come with a Wi-Fi card so people could surf the web right off the bat. And I recommend this 10.4 Fox. Um, it may not be so good for watching YouTube, but the student can always come to the library and borrow my Chromebook if they want to learn, uh, if they want to use YouTube for learning purposes, for, for Inkscape, uh, screencast, or whatever. Uh, but this is a pretty nice computer to have at home. And if they want to do touch typing practice, I'm going to recommend that they buy a copy of Mavis Beacon Teaches Typing from eBay. An older version is fine, version 12 or 13 or 11. Uh, usually it sells for 10 or 20 dollars, and I'll help them install it. So I'm even giving them a mouse that's a two button mouse. I have a one button mouse, a Macintosh mouse, to give to the student, but I want them to have a two-button mouse in case somebody else gives them a, a Windows computer without a mouse. Then they can use the same mouse on their Windows computer and switch it back and forth without having to go out and buy a mouse. Um, or maybe I might get this student a Linux computer sometime. And then the two-button mouse is going to be helpful for them if they want to share a mouse on, on two different computers. So um, that's it. This is Phil Shapiro. I hope these tips are helpful. Bye.